As healthcare looks to digital health technologies to transform care, special attention has been given to understanding how these digital health measurements will improve lives. I would like to welcome Annie Saha, Assistant Director at the FDA's Digital Health Center of Excellence, and Jennifer Golsack, Dime CEO, to share their thoughts and insights. Jen, I will turn it over to you. Fantastic, Yashoda, thank you so much for a terrific introduction here. Um, hi there, folks. My name is Jen Golsack. I'm the CEO here at the Digital Medicine Society, or DIME. We are absolutely delighted to host um, Data CC or the Digital Health Measurement Collaborative Community. Um, before we dive into this conversation, I do have to pause and thank the 46 extraordinary organizations who have been at the table with us over the last year, um, Yashoda and Jean, for your leadership of this initiative and this work effort. And Annie, it's an absolute pleasure to be here with you today. Your partnership has been best in class um, as we set up the community and as we embarked on this bold body of work to create the resources that we launched today. Um, Annie, I couldn't do an introduction uh, justice. So do you wanna go ahead um, and introduce yourself to folks on the line who may not know you? Sure, thank you. And I'll just echo uh, the sentiments. Uh, we at FDA have been really excited to have joined uh, the Data CC uh, as members uh, and really seeing the diverse perspectives uh, and the tools being launched today. Uh, for those who don't know me, uh, I'm Annie Saha, I'm Assistant Director in our uh, Digital Health Center of Excellence at uh, the Center for Devices and Radiological Health at FDA. I focus a lot on terms of thinking about how we incorporate uh, the patient perspective in our decision making in terms of how digital health can really ultimately improve health outcomes, uh, looking at strategic partnerships, how we advance the science uh, behind how we assess uh, digital health technologies and uh, sort of some other work in terms of operations uh, for the Center of Excellence so we can serve as a resource both within the agency as well as externally. Fantastic. And Annie, I've learned so much from you and your leadership and the way that you are able to bring together these different stakeholders and how instrumental the Center um, uh, for Digital, uh, I'm going to get this the right way around for you, the Digital Health Center of Excellence has become so quickly as being that linchpin connecting all of these different stakeholder groups, both externally to and internally within um, FDA. Annie, before we start in today, we talk about you know, data CC, the CC uh, demarcating that collaborative community. Um, tell us a little bit about um, the history of the collaborative community model, how it fits into a uh, CDRH strategy for folks who may not know. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the, the concept of collaborative communities came out of uh, our strategic priorities um, from 2018 to 2020, and really recognizing that there's a lot of uh, areas that intersect healthcare and medical devices that are really beyond FDA's purview or that we can't solve alone. And, uh, you know, clearly, as you'll be hearing about the tools today, that digital measurement inclusion is really something that's not, it's not an FDA specific issue. It's not any one of the 46 member organization issues, but really that you need to bring together a wide variety of stakeholders, really leverage different groups uh, in different perspectives to be able to move the needle and also recognizing the idea with a collaborative community is that uh, you're really trying to solve some of the most challenging aspects of you know a certain area whether it's artificial intelligence whether in this case it's digital measurement um, clinical trial diversity across the board that um, you really need to bring together different stakeholders and it's not going to be a one-off project that's going to you know a be all end all sort of solution to any one thing, but there needs to also be sort of a sustained effort over time. We're really bringing together the community and continuing to build over time. And I certainly see that happening uh, with the data CC work. Fantastic. For, for what my opinion's worth, and obviously I've got a tremendous amount of bias here, I think it's a terrific model. And having seen it play out over the last year, and as you said, the ability to bring in new stakeholders, it's been absolutely excellent. I think Digital health measurement has been an area of focus for DIME since we launched. This idea that now new tools are available, new analytic approaches to really uh, redefine health and disease and to add insights and information that we've never been able to capture before. I think what's terrific about Data CC and, and the reason that this partnership is so important vis-a-vis -vis digital health measurement is 
that transcends the regulated and the non-regulated environment. And so what we're able to do here is think about harmonization of best practice so that we aren't creating new silos going forward in our ability to use tools, some of which will have claims that, that raise to the level of uh, your oversight, some won't. But as we think about why are we excited about these tools in the toolbox? And in fact, uh, the, the very mission of Data CC to ensure that we achieve the promise of digital health measurement to improve lives for everyone, I think it's a really, really terrific model. And we've seen that be borne out over the last year. Annie, when we think about the, the, the projects that we tackled here, I'm incredibly proud of this team. And you'll remember what was probably 11 months or so ago now when we were kicking the tires on what are the most important issues that we need to tackle um, as our inaugural projects here at Data CC? Together, the community decided that it had to be inclusion, right? The, the rest of it, you know, all, and, and there are other issues that we have to address, and we will get to those as Data CC continues, but it's table stakes that we bring everyone with us. And so we had to start with a focus on inclusion. You've also been doing some fantastic work over the last year at CDRH vis-a-vis -vis, um, diversity and inclusion. Can you tell us a little bit about those strategies and how they may dovetail with um, our work and resources here at Data CC? Yeah, absolutely. And it's sort of a nice dovetail between our strategic priority efforts on collaborative communities as well as health equity, because we really see uh, collaborative communities as a way to advance our goals, uh, in, you know, ensuring that patients in the U.S. have access to high quality uh, safe and effective medical devices, and then, of course, thinking about it from that health equity perspective that ultimately no person should be excluded from health care and that you know, no patient should really be left behind. And so when we're thinking about digital health especially, you know, technology has the opportunity, also has the opportunity in both ways, both to improve health, but it could also divide us. And so really, we want to try to see where we can bridge that gap. Uh, through collaborations, but also our work internally, whether it's through, uh, you know, the draft guidance that was uh, put out by FDA across uh, the medical product centers on uh, diversity, inclusion, and clinical trials, uh, thinking about how to leverage digital health technologies for use in clinical investigations, uh, again, another cross sort of center effort uh, within FDA. And then, you know, ultimately, there are aspects that we can do in terms of how can we at FDA drive uh, the use of digital technologies that um, can improve health. Um, when they can, you know, bridge the gap and go directly to the patients where they are, you know, whether that's at a city, rural, different age, race, ethnicity, and really try to facilitate uh, that opportunity. But, you know, with that, we also do want to ensure that we're not creating more of a digital divide because that's sort of the antithesis of what we're trying to do from a health equity perspective. Um, Annie, I think, I, I think you touched on something incredibly important there. The thing that I find myself uh, reminding folks, and, and frankly myself often, is that digital tools, in this case we're focused on digital health measurement tools, are inanimate objects. They aren't going to solve anything or make anything worse independently of our activities and our actions. And I think you're exactly right, and, and I think this marks a moment in our field, we are at a fork in the road. Do we continue to grow and mature this industry in such a way that these tools are developed and deployed such that they ameliorate many of these longstanding um, health disparities? Um, or do we fail to take that action? Do we depend on the tool as the silver bullet, the widget to solve these problems um, and proceed forward? And, you know, perhaps at best, if we go down that road, you know, maintain a status quo, which is frankly unacceptable, or at worst, as you said, perhaps make things worse along the digital divide. Um, going back to what this community released today, I think it's this very intentional push um, of the field towards that path whereby we insist that this moment of innovation takes everyone with us, that we do things better than before. Um, and what I think is really interesting about these resources and folks on the line, we're going to dive into them in much more detail today, is the inclusion of um, the market opportunity calculator. Um, when we think about the need for incentives, I'll make a bold statement and say, I think that's oftentimes overlooked by pre-competitive collaborations um, that oftentimes we think it's enough to put the resources out into the world without the reason to action those. Annie, I think about sitting in your seat and I think constantly, especially right now where the field is moving very quickly, 
folks look to you to provide all of those incentives. Um, now we've provided, I hope, very strong business incentives to do this kind of work. Um, and in fact, folks can actually go in and calculate the magnitude of that incentive using this tool. But you've also got some really interesting draft guidance slated for release this year, I believe, um, around fast tracking, some tools that really are intended to ameliorate some health disparities. Am I correct in thinking that? And could you tell us a little bit more about that planned guidance? Uh, so we do have on our guidance, um, I believe a B list is what we call it, um, about you know what are breakthrough technologies that could um, sort of impact or improve um, health equity um, and sort of exacerbate um, or to sort of promote um, health equity and uh, sort of reduce disparities. Uh, not much more, but hopefully um, sometime in the near future to come. But uh, you know, to the point about sort of the business model and other things, that's exactly sort of the point of us joining collaborative communities is because that's not a tool that we would develop out of FDA to, you know, our job at FDA is not to provide uh, companies why they should invest uh, from a business perspective in equity. We can provide sort of the policy uh, levers uh, and, you know, we're, we're thinking from a regulatory perspective, but um, that's exactly why we need collaborative communities and to be able to bring different stakeholders to think about some of those other aspects of business models that aren't within our wheelhouse. Um, I mean, that's exactly right. And, you know, you, just, you guys do extraordinary work. You provide tremendous guidance. I think the accessibility of the field to FDA right now to have these conversations in this rapidly growing space is you know, absolutely phenomenal. And you cannot do all of those things. Those business incentives are wildly out of scope. So how can we put that together? And what I'm excited about right now is there, it almost feels like there's a, an exciting moment at time. In time, we see the um, accessibility um, for broadband um, getting pushed through. We see the strategies that FDA is driving. You think about the puzzle pieces that we're able to release today around why to do this. But, you know, why is there an imperative to do this work? Not just because it's the right thing to do, but there's actually strong business incentives to do this. And here's all of the resources that you need in order to capture that value. It does feel like we are at a um watershed moment where we could really drive folks down this pathway and insist that this is um it, it, not a nice to have but a need to have going forward as we continue to expand our use of digital health measurement to improve how we care for people annie it's been a roller coaster of a year we've done an awful lot of work in this time um tell us a little bit about what you enjoyed most uh, about participating in this community um, and with the 46 organizations that have been at the table with us yes it certainly has especially uh, we've done this all remotely and virtually uh among on top of all of that but uh you know to me i think the most rewarding and um, obviously, of course, seeing some of the ultimate outcomes to today with the actual toolkits being coming out, but really the conversations um, that everyone's really brought together and the different resources and the different perspectives everyone brings to bear. Uh, you know, some of the really great things uh, I think that the collaborative community has done is some of the workshopping where uh, it's tough for people to sit down for four hours in a day, um, but to really delve in and spend the time and the brainstorming uh, and really digging into the problem rather than just sort of talking about it. Um, at the high level, and I think that's been a real hallmark of uh, everyone who's been engaged uh, in the data CC and uh, to credit to, you know, you and Jean and Yashoda and the DIME team as well. Um, Yashoda and Jean, absolutely. They've been absolutely phenomenal leads of this effort. So Annie, I appreciate you recognizing them. Um, before we wrap, let's think about the, the collaborative community model. It's not intended to be um, a, a simple one and done endeavor. As we celebrate our one year anniversary, we are gearing up to welcome new members. We're thinking about the other work that we must do in addition to driving inclusion uh, to continue to um, ensure that the promise of digital health measurement is realized for everyone. Um, what do you see as the landscape, Annie? What gets you excited as we think about the coming year vis-a-vis -vis digital health measurement? I think as continuing to really understand, I think to your point earlier that you know, the technologies themselves are sort of the inanimate objects, but there's so much data and information that's coming from them. So how can we actually leverage that and use it that people, whether it's a person in their day-to-day -day life to manage their um, health and lifestyle, whether it's us at FDA, being able to use that information to make some kind of regulatory decision or you know, a clinician in terms of understanding how to help uh, care for uh, their patients or a shared decision-making conversation that it's really that insights and really how do we 
leverage all the information that's coming from it so that ultimately the information from the digital health technology is going to be helpful and impactful in terms of better outcomes.